So that's the bump map. And for the specular map, we can do exactly the same process. We can, uh, just like we did with the bump map here, but instead of starting with a flat color, let's just duplicate the background, move that up above. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna desaturate this. With a specular map, you don't need to have it as black and white or grayscale. Um, it will take the color information off the map and that will dictate the color of your specular highlights. But for this, I just want it to be black and white. So just keep that in mind as you're working. Perhaps you want yellow specular highlights on your model. If so, then keep the color in there, just desaturate it slightly and make it a bit darker. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to desaturate and then I'm just going to drop the brightness right down because we only want a slight specularity on the model here and what we're going to have if we're looking at this picture here this area isn't going to be as shiny as these areas here which works well because these areas are more exposed metal whereas this area here is the painted bit so just like we did with the bump map it's just a case of going through each level each layer and dictating which areas you want shiny and which areas you don't well you don't so if we let's say we take our recess copy here pull that up above we set that to 100 percent that's black so all these areas which will be pushed into the model won't have any specular highlights in them which you may want you may not want the same with the dirt let's say you take your dirt level uh, layer move that up above like so let's just turn that up to 100 percent so at the moment it's black, so the areas where the dirt is are going to have no specular highlights on them whatsoever. Now if this was water or paint that had been thrown onto the model, um, maybe it's blood. You'd invert that, maybe make it slightly red, um, and then that would make that really shiny, so it'd look more like liquid. But for us, this is just going to be some dull dust dirt type stuff so we can leave that as black because we don't really want it to have any specularity to it either. So just skipping ahead let's copy our wear and tear again because we know we want this to be really shiny. So let's just zoom in. So again we can get rid of that inner glow because we don't need that depth effect anymore but we're going to keep the outer glow. Instead we're going to make the outer glow uh, black. That's because this extra layer of paint, which is this sort of paint undercoat, which is around this, we don't want that to have any specularity to it. So we can make that black. Now for the rest of it, we can just use our brightness contrast again. Turn that right up. Like so. So these areas now, if we leave those white, they're going to be really shiny, which is what we want. So we could leave that as it is now, save that out, apply it to our model, see what it looks like, and then we can play around with this because we've got all the layers and just balance those out. If it's too shiny, we can always drop back the opacity. It's all flexible if you're working like this with keeping things in layers and not sort of breaking things or baking things down unless you need them. So if I just load in the specular map that we're working with now just we see here so this is the resulting specular map as you can see I've added a little bit of specularity to the actual decals there um, and also around the edges of the metallic bits which we added a bit of wear and tear to as well we want those to just be a little bit shinier than the actual metal themselves because they've been rubbed away so that's the specular map done so once you've got these, let's just put that in a nice group just so it's uh, nice and tidy. So there we have the specular map, there we have the bump map, and there we have that damage broken again. So let's just link that back up. Bump, specular, and in a way they're almost inverted copies of each other. So let's go over to Maya now. So here we have our flat model. So we have our two maps ready to be applied. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Right. At the moment, the torso shader is just set up. It's a Fong E. Now a Fong E is usually better to work with uh, because it's it's more geared towards that sort of metallic sort of shadery feel. You can play around with others if you if you found a better option. But all we're going to do now is just pipe in. I've got it set to viewport 2.0 as well. We're just going to pipe in those uh, textures and just see how we go. So let's just load in our bump map first. Set that to file. Let's just load this in. So that's the torso bump, like so. And as you can see, we, because we're using a bump map, now that looks just too drastic. But the the good po good thing about using a bump map is you can adjust the depth like so. So we could have that as two double that up, we could drop that down to 0.1 as you can see it's more subtle but maybe we want it as 0.25 so we're just getting that slight slight sort of recess in there just up that a little bit more and that's just working with that. So let's go ahead and just add that into the limb shader. Again, it's exactly the same setup. File. Let's find our bump map. Limbs bump. And again, it'll come in and it'll be way over the top. But we know we can do 0 0.05, just like on the torso. And that's set up like so. Now it's nothing. You can you just make it out as you're moving around, just picking off those edges. But that's all we want. We don't want these drastic, really over the top edges and gouges and bevels. We're just after a little bit of surface detail. If we were wanting more dramatic uh, details across the surface, then we'd add those in by sculpting them in using ZBrush or Mudbox or something like that. And because this is a subdivision surface model, we could take this easily. Um, actually, now we've UV'd it, we could take this easily into ZBrush and paint in a lot more dramatic detail if we needed, and then bring that back in. So it's quite flexible at this stage. So we've added in the bump maps. So let's now add in the specular maps. And we're going to add those in to the specular colour channel. Again, we're just going to go to File, load in the torso spec map which you saw previously and you saw that change there let's just do the same with the limbs and there we go and now as we move around you can just see in here this is a lot shinier than the yellow parts here So that's just working off that specular map and just saying these are really shiny because this is the metal underneath that's been worn away. This is a little bit more matte because obviously it's not got the uh, the specularity of metal. So from here we can just play around with our maps now. Um, and if It's usually better to add in a bit of an environment, and all I've done here is just added in a couple of lights. We can't see them at the moment, so let's just switch that to use all lights. And this will just help visualize those specularities and the bump maps a lot more as we move around. Particularly there, you just catch that glimmer. But if you're lucky enough, um, you could have this, which you've probably noticed, it's the Caustic Visualizer. Now it's a, a plugin initially, which you can download for Maya, and it's in beta at the moment for 3D Studio Max. Um, and what this is, is basically real-time ray tracing in your viewport. And it just allows you to see correct lighting, shadows, reflections, pretty much uh, what you would see in your render. Um, if I enable it, let it just do its thing. Now the plugin 
it, it has got a free 30 day trial. So I do urge you to download it, give it a go and just see how it works for you. But as you can see here, so we move around it, it updates itself and we've got almost a sort of render quality viewport now. Let's just peel that off, close that down just so we can see it full screen. And this is just going to allow us to just look at it and just see how it's going to look while it's rendered. So maybe we can play around with the shaders a bit more now. So let's look at that torso. Maybe we want it to be more reflective. So I'll turn that up. And there we can see the reflection there. But the reflectivity works off the specularity colour as well. So obviously because these are whiter they're going to be a lot more reflective than the body. But this is just what we need as you can see. We've got a slight reflection in the body, more reflection in the torso there. We can adjust these as well and we can see those being affected. See that brightening up like so. Make the highlight size smaller. Maybe set that to five. Maybe set that to three. But the good thing is, we don't need to do preview renders every two minutes. We don't need to adjust this preview render, adjust this another preview render. We can pretty much see it working in here, and we can also see how the bump map's looking. If we wanted to, we could have a different material on the cockpit. So let's assign a new blind to that. Like so. Make it blue. A bit paler. A bit darker. Like so. And then we can adjust the reflectivity on that. The specularity. Change the specular colour to pink, maybe red. And you can just see it all updated in the viewport. The reflections in there as well. But that's a nice way of just quickly playing around with the shaders to get the sort of look that you're after with the model. And obviously we can adjust the lighting as well and as you can see there the shadows are moving around with it. So let's just get rid of that red. I'm not really keen on that red specularity there. So let's just get this back to full screen. So that brings us pretty much to the end of this uh, course. Just to recap, what you've done is you have taken a pre-made mech type model this loader character in front of you here, applied a full set of UVs to it, then you've explored baking out those initial texture maps, the occlusion map, the diffuse map, and those are just going to be there to get you started when you then go into start adding in your dirt, painting in the wear and tear, and adding in lots more details into the actual textures. And then we've just wrapped that up just by adding those textures along with a bump map and a specular map onto a shader in Maya and just throwing together a very quick render. I mean obviously you can play around with those textures a hell of a lot more than I have in uh, in this course. You can experiment a lot more with the uh, the shaders as well. So from here on it's pretty much left in your hands. I uh, I hope you've learned something from this course and I hope you've enjoyed following along with it. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, feel free to grab me online. Um, my website will be linked to this course somewhere. Um, and I guess that's me signing off. So thanks for watching and I will see you on my next tutorial.